Matt from DrawingTutorialsOnline.com. I just wanted to come back. I had originally started filming a live stream today, and all of a sudden I just wasn't feeling good. I don't know. My neck totally tightened up. Very weird. So I'm like, okay, let's pause this. This, this is not fun at all. Uh, so I felt really bad, and I'm like, you know what? Let's come back, and let's work on the drawing a little bit more. Let me just upload a video for you. It's later in the day, and um, this is Claire Beachman. We le as we left off, this is Claire Beachman uh, from Outlander, and uh, I had mentioned in, in the live stream that is now deleted because it was the worst live stream I've ever completed in my life, um, that this uh, woman is uh, one of my favorite characters, one of my favorite series. And uh, it, it, my wife and I kind of have like a love-hate um, relationship with this series because, you know, you watch it and it gets extremely annoying because everything is going smooth and then somebody gets kidnapped or somebody gets killed or somebody gets, uh, you know, ousted from where they live or somebody invades the town. It's just constant drama. And uh, so it gets a little frustrating that way. But you know, I saw the picture. I'm, I'm not really big into drawing stars, uh, but I'm like, you know what? I, I really like this actress. I'm going to try to draw her. And when I first started drawing her, I knew like this morning, uh, my first couple of lines, I'm like, okay, there's going to be a struggle. This is not really coming out uh, good. And it's quite small, this drawing. Uh, so I was uh, in the live stream. I was showing everybody with a ruler. I'm like, okay, that eye right over there is really like less than an eighth of an inch tall. Uh, that eye right there is about an eighth of an inch, and it's a little too small for my aging eyes right now. And so it was the struggle, like I said, but I'm like, you know what? I I'm going to fight this one, and I'm going to see if I can't uh, push it and, and make it work. So right now, it it it's a decent drawing. I don't totally dislike it. Uh, the goal is to try to make it look a little bit more like her. And uh, let's see if I, I, I could, with, with a little time here in this live stream, this isn't a live stream, this is a recorded video. I'm so used to saying live stream now. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. It just, my neck totally uh, tightened up. And I'm like, yeah, okay, we need to stop filming like immediately. So I just took a little pause, got it. Uh, I don't know if I was dehydrated or what, but uh, just had something to drink. No, I didn't drink whiskey. I just had some water and a little bit of lunch and I'm, I'm back. And it just, <clears throat> these things happen. You know, I've, I've had situations like in the classroom where I'm teaching and uh, I just, you know, the students can tell I, I really wasn't feeling great. And it's just more of like a low key class. Uh, I never, never, um, well, once, there was one time I'm like, listen, I can't do this. I, I got to go. I had like a wicked migraine headache and um, yeah, and I, and I left that. But that was like once in like, uh, 24 years of teaching at the college that I did that. So um, what I'm doing here, if I look at this part of her hair, I'm asking myself the question, what's right below that? So this needs to actually be moved over to the left more. She's got the best hair. It's really chaotic. There's so much to her hair. It's not even funny. Um, every scene, that's the other thing with this. We, my wife and I always imitate this actress um and i'm certainly not going to do it right now but uh yeah it's she's dramatic she's good at what she does um she really plays the role uh well so um now let's that's enough of the hair but I, i'm measuring over here i'll, I'll come back to the hair i kind of want to keep a little bit of it loose so just a couple of key things here with hair that i mention in all of the videos that i post up here on YouTube, just make sure that when you're drawing hair that you are keeping the edges very, very, very soft. You don't want to have too many hard edges. When we left off in the live stream, I was mentioning that this is one of the hardest edges right here because it's just a strand of hair that is coming in front of, and it's a foreground strand of hair right here, so you want that to be a little edgier just to make it come, quote unquote, into the foreground. All right. Now, the one part of the piece that I've barely done any work with is the ear. And uh, usually I just block that in early on just as a simple shape, uh, that shape of the ear. Yeah, I can see I'm, uh, what I'm doing. I have the reference all the way to the left. And you look at my head. I'm moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I think I've been doing a little too much of that lately. And 
Um, I think that was tightening up my neck a touch. So looking is really important. Now let, let's mosey on down over here to her neck. And I also was mentioning in, and let's, let's erase out that line. So I'm going to take, so I'm working with my trusted coal erase. And uh, you know what? That's not going to be the eraser for this little area. On just plain old Strathmore 400 series generic drawing paper. It doesn't say generic on the pad, but it is kind of like a generic um, pad. You can find it anywhere. It's not anything special. I'm going to resharpen. And uh, yeah, she has uh, the neck to end all necks. It's like the longest neck in the world. In a good way, in a good way. So we're just going to shade down. Now, uh, with this, I don't know how I'm going to end this portrait, but uh, uh, you never want to just have a floating head. You always want to have a little bit of those shoulders. This shoulder is going to be a little bit lower than the other shoulder. So just kind of suggest that for now, okay? Uh, I'm just going to leave that and just go back, put a little bit more tone. A little bit more tone over here. Now, this is shading that uh, somebody was asking in the live stream about shading. And should uh, one use all different types of graphite? And, of course, you could do that. There's nothing wrong with using multiple pencils uh, in a drawing. And I was trying to explain to the person. I forgot their name because I was uh, in another headspace. Um, that I don't use multiple pencils. I like to keep it to one pencil because what I like to try to teach my students uh, to do is to develop their eye-hand coordination. And you see what I'm doing right now? I'm going really, really light with my touch. I think this is something that you want to practice. And you don't always want to rely on your tools for your technique. You can, and many, many artists do. I guess I am, in a way, too, um, relying on this color erase pencil um, to help me get through the drawing. But in terms of light and dark, I, I really do think that it is vital that you um, practice this touch thing. All right, just a little bit. I'm going to lower this part of her chin. Yeah, that's a little bit more her. Okay, good. So those little things, those little subtleties make a huge difference. Let's, uh, let me, uh, where's that eraser? Okay, good. Um, yeah, I can feel it in my neck. I've, I've got something going on in my neck today. And for those of you who've been around me for a while, you know that I have the herniated discs in my neck. And uh, I think I've just been I've been doing these stretches um, as a blade, and I, I might have overdone it, and that was the reason why my neck tightened up during the live stream. Very, very, very odd, very frustrating as well. Um, you know, you want to come on in and do the live stream and uh, teach people, and sometimes health will just kind of uh, hit you right in the face with a sledgehammer and be like, no, you're not doing that today, pal. <laughs> so... Now, this is a tough one because, look, her. this is called a masseter muscle. It's used for chewing. It's on the outside part of your jawbone, and it's catching light. Now, one could argue that it's catching light from the top, but I'm not quite sure. I can't tell. You know, I can't tell if all of the light is coming from the top or there's a reflector board, which is usually done um, with actresses like this where they just d really don't want any harsh shadows on their face so they'll bounce light into the shadows and i i gotta admit this one is really um i can't figure it out i i can't figure it out if there is a reflector um see right over here on her neck how there's that rim light now okay so that tells me that yes there's a reflector because there's no way light could hit underneath her ear if the light is just coming from the top because her hair and her ear would be casting a shadow on her neck. So I just, you know, the more you think things through and talk th things through in your artwork, you'll figure it out. So I just kind of figure that, that there is a, 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 bound, a light reflector. They use these big, huge, um, well, 
a layman like me, a layman photographer, would use a piece of white foam board, but they actually have these um, very expensive, super duper light um, reflector boards that fold up and uh, they're easy for travel and that's probably what they're using. All right, now with the lip, you don't wanna have the, out, the lip outlined too much, okay? Um, yeah, again, I, I just, I, I feel so bad about what happened earlier today. I, I don't want to belabor the fact because I know you're watching this to learn how to draw and you're not, don't want to hear me constantly apologize. That would get kind of, um, annoying after a while, but yeah, I just kind of ab abruptly ended and that wasn't cool. So it is what it is. And I'm just, uh, I wanted to come back here on YouTube, even if it's a recorded video and just try to give you a little bit of value and uh, talk you through some of these techniques that I'm trying to use here. Um, all right, right over, let, let's uh, use the big brush and brush some of this off, some of these eraser crumbs. Now, you see what I did there with her? Um, right here, it's too light. So we can take the residual from the brush and tone that down. Actually, I'm gonna use the brush a lot right now. Bear with me here for a moment. Okay. Just drawing here with the brush a little bit more. Let's do it a little bit more on the top. Good. Feather away. So her neck is in shadow. Her chest is catching tons of light. Yeah, her eyes need a lot of work. A lot of little things need a lot of little bits and pieces of work. A little bit over here. Yeah, my neck still totally feels tight. A little bit over here. So when you are drawing this nostril, please don't press down super hard. Kind of keep it somewhat of a middle tone. All right. You don't want to make nostrils. So you see what I'm doing? I'm making the nostril lighter than the eyes. What's more important to you, the nostril or the character's eyes? So in this particular case, I really want you to look into the character's eyes. I don't want to make the nose super duper contrasty. I think that's a, a thing that I see quite often when I'm uh, critiquing student work is I see um, much, much too much contrast. Uh, and trust me, I'm, I'm my, this drawing is by far not even close to being perfect. Uh, very far from being perfect. But the point that I'm trying to make here is try not to go too contrasty with the nostril, okay? Because it's just, you don't want to lead the viewer's eye to the, to the character's nostril. You want to lead the viewer's eye to the character's eyes. That's where most of the emotion is going to be. Let me resharpen. So I'm resharpening a lot because this head is small. So if we go from the chin to the top of the head, it's three and three quarters, okay? That's quite small for me uh, as of late. And uh, to get into this like little area with the lip, it's tiny. Just look, keep looking. It's really soft over here. Don't outline with a hard edge line. Kind of keep it somewhat soft as well. And remember, uh, there's a tilt with a lot of things. And I, I didn't get the tilt great. Trust me, I didn't. Um, there's a lot of flaws with this piece. So her eyes tilt, her lips tilt, her chin tilts a little bit. And uh, we should try to lower that chin over here. And then it shoots up. So these are the attributes of this model, this actress, I should say.
And I'm going very s slow here. Okay, now the lower lip is not, because she's, I think, I, I, I don't know if she has lipstick on or she doesn't. She doesn't look to have any eye makeup on um, at all. I wouldn't think she would have lipstick in a, in a history in the wilderness in Scotland uh, in the late 1700s. I, I don't know. But you still don't want to outline. Oh, yeah, my neck is tight. God, my neck is tight. What the hey? You know, I, I'm putting things into perspective because there's a member of the website who right now is in the cancer ward. And uh, yeah, so if you're having a bad day like I am having a bad day here with my neck and uh, like woe is me and dealing with all that stuff, um, there's always going to be somebody who has it just a little bit tougher than you do. And I, I try to remind myself of that every single day. And, and that is... Uh, topic for another uh, subject for another topic where you want to um, to be what's the difference really between an amateur artist and a professional artist well there's many differences but one difference is the word consistency and that's consistency of style and that's a topic a huge topic that we can spend an entire podcast on or um, a live stream or just I have a course on that on my website process consistent uh, process but the other thing that separates a uh, professional from an amateur is a professional in order to meet their deadlines as an artist has to work through adversity meaning if you have that stiff neck if you have that you know slight headache or uh, something's not really working for you with your body, you have stomach issues or something like that, you kind of have to work through it on some days, not all days, but some days. And, and I, I'll never forget my teacher mentioning that to me um, when I was in college, and I'm like, boy, I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to do that. I would just want to kind of go to bed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I, I, I remember working through a broken arm, uh, and I had like my biggest client and, and I had to finish the job and um, see how I'm kind of moving all around the drawer and I'm not getting stuck in one area. Work on one area and you move to another area so you don't get that tunnel vision. Uh, yeah, I, I had a broken arm, didn't even know I had a broken arm and I just worked through it and met the deadline. True story. And uh, yeah, I was young. I did not have any health insurance. I was in my early 20s. Actually, no, this was um, mid 20s and uh that was an awful experience uh not fun but yeah that's another difference between a professional and an amateur a professional just kind of does what they have to do a professional artist that is um to get through and meet the deadline okay so i'm doing what i have to do here today i stopped the live stream I took a little bit of a break, and I'm just trying to add some value for you. I'm really committed um, to getting videos up on my YouTube channel every single week uh, because I know there's a, a lot of people out there who are just looking for um, good information that's going to help them improve their drawings in a lighthearted sort of way. I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'm lighthearted here talking about, you know, my neck problems. Isn't that, isn't that really, really fun? <laughs> I should... Um, technically be smaller and have the drawing bigger next time next time you don't need to see me so big here uh all right let's just so now we're bouncing around and with a dull pencil find the dull section i want to just draw that little shape within her ear now okay let's talk about ears do not just like the nostrils do not press down super hard because ears are cartilage and they are extremely translucent so there's like a you see how warm her ear is you don't want to make that ear too dark okay i learned my lesson speaking about illustration and being a professional uh painting a book cover and i did a book cover um, of this girl on a porch looking out and i used too much dark brown paint in her ears 
And my agent, when I went to drop the painting off at my agent, he was like, what's wrong with her ears? They kind of look like they have dirt in, in them. I'm, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Did you just really say that to me? He's like, I can't bring this to the art director. You have to bring this back and fix it. I'm like, no, bring it to the art director. You know, And if they give me more changes, they give me more changes. But you're not the art director. I didn't say that to him. That's what I was saying in my mind. But I'm like, please, just bring it to the art director. Um, and maybe she doesn't like something else, so I'll fix the ears at the same time. So, yeah, that was, I got no changes on that job. I, I was happy. But I learned my lesson about ears. And I kind of respected my agent, and I, I agreed in the end. But at the time, I had worked on the painting for like six days in a row. And I certainly did not want to bring that thing home because I lived far away from Manhattan and they were in Manhattan. So this ear shape is a little wonky. Does the ear need to be pushed out to the right? It does. Now, this is going to be a choice. I could keep it where it is, or I could push it out to the right. Now, if you push it out to the right, then the whole thing needs to be pushed out to the right. And then we get into the... Um, question is the ear going to be too big and kind of odd looking for this uh, elegant actress uh, you could make the ear too wide and and then you could also use your artistic license and make the ear smaller I don't think she needs any artistic license I kind of think she's perfect as is but in terms of you know something to think about in terms of your drawing Maybe uh, you want to make the ear a little less wide and uh, a little bit more uh, compact just to make it a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more graceful. But again, uh, I don't think that this woman needs any of that. Okay, so as we progress, that helped a little bit. So w why am I even dealing with this? Because when I look at this part of her ear from here to here, it feels pretty wide. Okay, so that's the reason why I brought that subject matter up. Now, let's come back with this little eraser. Good. And, uh, well, I don't know about good, but slightly better. Now, I, I'm going really light with all of this, everybody, uh, just because I'm going to go over the ear with the strands of hair. Okay, and I just, I want, you, okay, so you should, in my opinion, keep one area of your drawing a little bit more unfinished. It relaxes the piece. So that's what I'm going to do with the ear. I'm going to keep part of it unfinished. Now we can start to add, where is that? A uh, loose strand of hair. You know, YouTube is going to have a little bit of a restriction on me in terms of how long my upload could be. Now, I've got three loose strands of hair. There are not three loose strands, Matt. Darn it. Okay, so let's go darker with these two. Let's get the brush, and let's soften all of that. I, I have a, a resemblance, but not a true likeness yet. My goal... And uh, I'm going to try to make this a true likeness. I really am because I, yeah, I, I always wanted to draw her. I love um, the way that she looks in all these photographs. I, I used to illustrate history books. I have one right here. I don't think I can show this to you. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. Uh, so this is an old painting uh, that I've done. What? In 2001, my God, this thing is 2001. Look at how tiny that signature is on the bottom. Oh, it says 01 at the bottom. And look at how tiny her face is. So that face, if I take my ruler, bear with me, I'm sorry. Uh, her whole head is an inch and five-eighths. I could, and her eye is... A sixteenth of an inch and I have a highlight in that eye 
that eye is a 16th of an inch and I have a highlight in there. I, I don't know how I used to do that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I love uh, historical books and history and that's why I'm, I'm attracted to this um, series because of the history. All right, we're back. It's one of those days. I'm telling you, it's one of those days. My camera just would not focus. Like, I'm looking for an excuse to buy a new camera because the one that has been filming my videos, I've, I've gotten my money's worth out of that camera, like a gazillion fold. I think it's starting to get like a little long in the tooth. And I have two of the same characters, one film in my face and one film in the drawer. And then I, I bought the same character, uh, character. I bought the same camera because I thought it would be um, just, I, I wanted to have two cameras that I really understood since I'm not a trained videographer. And uh, yeah, so they've served me well for many, many, many years with no problems. What I'm going to lower this eyebrow. Uh, with no problems whatsoever. Just recently, the one above me, I've had some flicker uh, with that. But I don't know if that's just the cable. Uh, kind of cables go bad too. It could be that and I want to lower her hair. So I'm trying to, I, I haven't really worked too much on her hair. And as you can see, I've changed the whole um, video monitor around. So let's lower her lid. I want to go darker here. That will increase, not too dark, but this will increase the tilt of her eyes. Cause I mentioned earlier on that I did not get the tilt that good so by dropping that lower eyelid we enhance the tilt of her eyes and um, yes and this makes her we make her eyes a little wider with the lashes and then dropping this eyebrow we make her eyes a little bit wider that helped a lot and the thing with eyebrows you do not want to ah we were wanted to do that highlight on the lip before I destroy this. Do not want to go too dark with the eyebrow over here. It's very light. As it is, I have it too dark. Now, with that being said, she's starting to appear a little bit more. Let's drop. Oh yeah, look at this. The bang is very close to the edge of the eye. We're going to call this the bang, her bangs. But I think in this particular one, it's a singular. Yeah, that little uh, curly part of the hair is very jet black. Very classic look to this model. Reminds me of um, the Gibson girls. It reminds me of a Waterhouse drawing. Water ha um, Waterhouse drawings, if you just Google that, there are some of my absolute favorite drawings ever so i like these like historical hairstyles because it reminds me of um, the waterhouse and I, I i think even though this is a drawing that is taking place during a very um trying day i think i'm going to work on this drawing for longer than just today because I, I really want to make this thing happen and make it look good. All right, now this. Where does this aspect of her hair stop? It stops under her eyelid. So if I go all the way, so this needs to be lower. Therefore, this all needs to be lower. Wow. And that means this too needs to be lower. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that was weird. The camera wouldn't focus. Hopefully it's focused now. Let's see. Oh, that's really focused. My God, look at my pencil. And you can see the numbers on the, um, yeah. Forgot what that, the barcode. So totally it's pretty focused. 
Now, her eyes are just, uh, this is a challenge. So this has been like a crazy day, just fighting through this day. Thought this was going to be an easy day. Cheekbone, zygomatic arch right over there. Zygoma bone, masseter, has a little side light hitting it. I have kind of dirtied up the paper big time, but it's fine because you can erase out and the dirty paper erases out um, and adds a whole nother dimension to the drawing. Pretty cool. She has a rim light on both sides. Right here, you see the rim light where I'm erasing out right now? She does have a little clef in the chin ever so slightly. You don't want to make that chin as light as her forehead, not even close just because there should be a gradation in the light. Let's erase with the big eraser, get the eraser crumbs off. And uh, where am I now? She has a lot of light on her lower eyelids. Let's see if I can't do that. It's so tiny. Can I erase that out? So tiny underneath her eye, that lid, cheekbone, a rim light. Even this part of her lip is catching a little bit of light. We don't want to make it too light. Yeah, I've, I've so far, you're very lucky today because I've spared you my imitation of Jamie when he says his wife's name. <laughs> Maybe I'll save it to the end of this video. Okay, so we're looking at the white of her eye and it's a little skinny white of the eye. So when you get to this eye, you gotta look a lot. She has a fold of skin over here, lower eyelid. Just do not press down hard. I don't really like to put in that information, but in this particular one, since I do not have a pure likeness, I'm trying to do what I can to make it look more like her. Her eyes actually are a little bit lighter. Uh, before I lighten them, I want to just work on this lower eyelid. It curves around more. I do not have that. And I'm moving around a lot right now. Get the earlobe. I'm going sharper and darker here. So much fun. My God, this is a, a great face to draw. It is super hard. I got to I got I got to say I'm struggling. This is difficult. And um, I don't like to say the phrase crow's feet, especially on this particular model, but let's just call it folds near the eye. Um, I am going to go a little lighter than what I see in the 
in the photo. I'm just really trying to match values because I, I've always, when I used to paint book covers, really tiny faces like the one that I showed you, um, I always wanted to get the likeness and then change things around. So I would try to match all of the values. See, this point isn't even pointy enough to get into that eye right there. I, I would try to match the values and then after I got the likeness change things ever so slightly I just think that she's softer than what I have here in the drawer and I'm a little hard edge so let's try the brush soften that let's soften the eyebrow push it up push it up push it up I'd be doing the same thing with paint soften this now I need to, oh, let's, something dropped. Let's soften this underneath. Her eyes are lighter. There's no doubt that they're much lighter than what I have there. I just don't know if it's going to be worth it for me to try to go on in there with this eraser. It would be tapping. I'm going to tap. Softer. It needs, her eyes are too harsh and dark. Now, on one note, that's good because it's going to make for a nice, strong drawing but it's bad because it's not her likeness. I'm much happier with the tilt of the eyes now since I lowered this. Now, notice I'm not doing individual lashes. Just did three right there. Um, let's come over here. I can do this all day. It's just, uh, I can't believe it. Today was supposed to be an extremely easy day. I woke up and I got sidetracked with doing research online for health stuff, watching YouTube videos of these trainers and uh, got completely distracted and started a little late. Woke up way too early, um, five something I woke up and then got distracted doing research and started this drawing way too late. So it's just, it's been a crazy day. Tomorrow's going to be even crazier because we are going to a winery, which I don't really drink that much anymore uh, for my wife's birthday. Her good friends, our good friends, Kim and John, want to take my wife to a winery out on Eastern Long Island for her birthday. So tomorrow's going to be crazy too. And I think I'm going to be designated driver. Monday, I start a new summer semester at the School of Visual Arts. Perspective. Perspective class. It's actually a lot of fun. couple loose strands. Slow. Super slow. Okay, you know, I'm going to put this little... I see this. This is copy paper. I'm going to just put it down over here on, on the right because I, I'm starting to realize that uh, right now my... Uh, her drawing of this actress is on a computer screen. And I used to think that the heat from the computer screen would buckle the paper, but it's not the heat from the computer screen. It's the heat from my hand. Um, and so I've been putting these pieces of paper on top of my drawing to prevent the heat from my hand from making the paper buckle a little bit. Let's get back to softening Miss Frazier's face. Yep. 
And there's a little, sorry for the breathing. See, I'm holding my pencil further back now because this is a very light value. The whole mouth area needs so much work. It's not super dark, Matt. I'm, I keep making that area dark and should not be dark. And that part of her lip actually gets skinnier. I'm going to say that it tilts a lot. So let's take the little mono zero. See how I just made that too dark? Let's lift up that lower lip. So I don't like that at all. I'm going to soften all of that out. And we need to do work with the eraser. Now, remember, this drawing is super tiny. From the chin to the top of the hair is three and three quarter inches, basically. So these lips are a quarter of an inch tall. Crazy. Sorry for the arm going in front there. Just trying to adjust. Okay. We need to make this lip lighter. Soft pressure. Not white, just lighter above the lip, lighter. We have a rim light on the dimple of her mouth over here, her mouth muscle, I should say. Mouth muscle, chin, light, not as light as the forehead, just slightly lighter. A little bit lighter over here. Okay, we're getting there. It's a slow go. All right, so listen, I think we're going to call this video done. I'm going to continue to work on this piece. I don't know for how long, but I want it to look good. So I'm going to say I'm going to work on it more. But I don't know how long I could upload a video to YouTube because lately that's all I've been doing is doing live streams and not really uploading videos. So I know there's a limit to the length of the video. Let me just do a couple more minutes here. I want to kick this out. Yeah, no, that's it for now. I think um, we're golden. It needs a lot of work. And uh, I'm going to have fun doing all this work. Let's just soften it all out one more time. And uh, I need to make her, this eye, 
lighter. Okay. So listen, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, even if you join me on the live stream and I cut that off, thank you for joining me on the live stream. And uh, leave a comment below if you like what I did here. If you hated what I did, give it a thumbs down. If you like what I did, give it a thumbs up. I shouldn't be saying that on YouTube, but I just did. Uh, just be honest with your feedback. I would love that. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.